Hi everybody, The One Metha here, back with more fan fiction for you guys to hear about. <laughs> you know the drill by now. I've sort I'm on my favorites list on fanfiction.net, sorted them by publication date, and rereading all the stories, seeing if they still deserve to be on my list or not. Alright, let's dive in. Uh, first up is Prodigal Delinquent by Ethereal Euphoria which is a Harry Potter fic where he's like super intelligent and figures out magic through some weird stuff like hearing people talk about it and then just, then thinks of everything as rules and just breaks them all like the first thing he does is oh gravity is 9.8 meters per second then he picks up a rock and he slows it down using his magic okay so that's that's okay interesting way to start it and uh, that's really all I have to say about it. You know, what it is. Because I just found it really boring. Um, Harry, I just found him to be a little irritating. I never cared about him or, like, connected or felt anything, felt interested in him in any way. Like, hell, the, the main point of this is that he's supposed to be super interesting so he can break all the rules of magic and stuff and, you know, make that make ha magic work in interesting ways that people don't see or don't normally use and I didn't care you know I wasn't I wasn't excited to see what he would do next and that was the whole premise of the, the story I just didn't give a shit super uninteresting for me this falls off my list uh, after that we have He's Not Normal by Uncle Stoji uh, and this is a uh, more of a comedy <laughs> parody fic, where Harry just, after a night of drunkenness, just accidentally falls back in time and just rolls with it, you know, it's, um, <laughs> and he's just, like, you know, half crazy, like, just goes with the ridiculousness, uh, this is a borderline case for me when I was, uh, thinking about deciding to keep it on my list or not, because it's a comedy, but it's not, like, super rolling on the floor laughing kind of comedy. It's more just a constant, constantly just, you know, <laughs> oh, that's funny, and then just constantly like that kind of comedy for me. The jokes, like, it, that's the thing, it's like, they're all like just a constant barrage of small jokes. Basically kind of like, uh, you know, an old sitcom kind of thing, you know, simple stuff. And when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's like, uh, would I want to read it again? In, in the end, that is, like, the, like, you know, for me, deciding whether to keep stuff on my list, if it's super amazing, yeah, that that's obviously there, but also it's the main thing is, like, do I want to come back and reread this again? And the answer for this is yes. So, again, you know, as with most of these, it's not finished, so, but if you just want a bunch of short humor with a slightly loony Harry, this is for you. And yeah, it's staying on my list. Uh, after that we have Perry Hotter by Harry Sinclair and uh, basically this is a really sh you know it's a one it's a one shot it's a short one shot so it's a single joke fic about Ginny and Hermione stumbling across Harry's whereabouts after he goes missing uh, it's fine it's okay for a joke never need to read it again read it once and done falls off my list uh uh, now going to Naruto is a uh, Fox of Konoha with by crazy like art and um, Yeah, so this has very it has a different History of Naruto because like the QB attack doesn't happen and instead uh, Tsunade just ends up finding a child in the woods uh, Sorry, I don't know who that is One second. Right. Shush. Oh my god, that was Siri. I don't know why that was going off. All right. Um, but yeah, so there's the minor change and that, and but in the end, this fic is pretty similar to uh, He's Not Normal, in that it's a comedy that constantly chuck makes me chuckle, with the small difference that there were a few moments that I laughed my ass off. <laughs> Um, just like there were a few lines that really got me 
Um, so that already puts me up one step ahead um, of he's not normal. And I kept he's not normal, so obviously I'm, I, like, I'm gonna keep this one. Uh, this similar thing where it's not complete and it has some plot threads that seem to be going places that just get left hanging, which makes me sad, but I still enjoy this same way. It's like, you know, sitcom kind of humor. I think it's fun, and yeah, check it out. It stays on my list. Uh, okay, next is The Naruto Files, colon, Harry Potter, by Dan Fiction. Uh, and here we go, like, uh, if you've been watching these videos, you know there's a lot of Naruto and Harry Potter fix on my list. I think this is the first one where it's actually a crossover between the two. <laughs> Um, so, basically, sometime during his training trip, Naruto ends up in a portal and ends up in the world of Harry Potter and starts working as a PI. And then he stumbles across Harry and decides to train him in the use of chakra, because apparently magic users have chakra, and there's also a couple elements from the Harry Dresden universe there, but it ends pretty abrupt. it like goes on hiatus when Harry's about to start his first year, so nothing really substantial happens. Um, and that's that's the thing with a lot, a lot of these, like I've, had, I've said this a lot, where it's like, oh, this fig is just moving pieces, or this fig is setting up, setting up stuff. And it's weird, especially like for these, when you get to the, the longer ones, and it's like, oh, this is 70,000 words of just setup and just backstory. You know, and that's, you know, it's that's already longer than a lot of books. Like, the first Harry Potter book was only 77,000 words. So, it's like, okay, but it's, so, this is like a tangent, but it's like, it's a symptom of fanfiction, where, um, one, most fanfic writers, uh, just, they write a lot, uh, and they delve into stuff for long periods of time, you know, and instead of just giving you the important bits a lot of people like to just show off how good they good they are by making super invent super involved and inventive backstories and i've praised other people for this um i'm not going to say that i haven't and i do like it in some cases but it, that that does lead to this bloat where you have this super long story where nothing happens because it didn't actually get to the interesting bits uh, so, uh, but now ba focusing back on this, uh, I do like a bit of the setup and if it had gone further in some payoffs that actually occurred, like, you know, the bits with Naruto interacting with the Harry Dresden vampires and stuff like that would have been cool, but there's really no payoff and it just is super unsatisfying, you know, check it out if you like, but like I said, it's probably going to leave you wanting falls off my list. Uh, Alright, moving on to Lean On Me, Lean On You by... Oh god, uh, Sipoth Sithicus. I, I don't know. Uh, and this is Love Hina! God, I hate Love Hina. <laughs> it's so weird. Love Hina, I, I do remember, like, I'm sure I've said this before. Um, I, I remember watching it a little, and I just hate. I can't stand it anymore. The the playful abuse genre of harem animes or things like that, like Ranma one half and all this stuff, and those that abuse just gets played for laughs and stuff. It really irritates me. Um, but here, you're like, yeah, like this story starts off with like it's Keitaro's birthday, and, and all the girls forget and just beat on him for no reason, and then he ends up in his aunt's bed uh, looking for comfort, and then runs away from the other girls, which eventually leads to him like basically having a super panic attack, and it ends before things go much further than that. Um, yeah, like like I said, the, the um, I hate the the, pl the idea of playful abuse, and it gets taken a bit more seriously, but not much. Like it just gets taken in the sense that oh, Keitaro actually sees it as a problem and is like can feel emotionally drained from it, but everybody else still like 
doesn't really care about it or doesn't think much of it. Uh, I hate that, and I hate this sense of abuse a lot. Other than that, uh, the main relationship is a little squicky because it's, you know, kind of incest. Uh, so if you don't like that, don't read this. And if you can stomach the playful abuse, abuse, maybe go for it. It's basically just a mediocre romance story that barely gets off the ground. So not for me. It falls off my list. All right. Uh, two more Harry Potter fix, and that'll be the end of the video. Uh, first one is Death's Pride by Paladeus, and here's another time travel fic where uh, basically he keeps dying so his death angel gets t tired of that happening so sends him back with his memories to actually get things done right and also occasionally stops by to give him more info. So it's super long, I'll tell you that right now, 600,000 words. Uh, it's unfinished, there we go again. There's a Thing where people write a lot uh, I just got bored as as the thing progressed uh, there's bits it, so un unlike like the last ones where I said like there was a lot of writing like there are payoffs you know like yes the min the major arc you know of, of fulfilling the prophecy and like killing Voldemort and all stuff that doesn't get done but that's not the only arc that's going on there's other relationships other arcs like Luna getting bullied and stuff like that and there's there's payoffs like that are happening so that keeps that that can keep you sort of invested and I actually like those like Luna's arc like with the bullies and stuff I actually like that a lot and like the whole bit of uh, legimency and mindscaping is pretty interesting um, but it's just really not not the most interesting thing in, for the rest of it. You know, like, I, I remember those bits. The rest of it kind of fell out of my head an hour after I was reading it. And it's just, you know, super long. I didn't really have much to complain about the writing or, like, the characters, because, like I said, I, uh, well, I didn't say that, but, like, the characters, I liked it. I liked their characters, how they grow, how their relationships grow. How Luna is amazing. I love everything to do with her in this story. Um, but in the end, like like I've said before, the question becomes, would I read this again? And the answer is no. There's nothing there's nothing objectionable, there's nothing too bad, and like I said, it's written competently, but I would not go back and reread this, so this is gonna fall off my list. Uh, and the final one for this video is Run That By, Run that by Me Again by Sarah1281. And so this is basically a collection of scenes where instead of just rushing... Uh, this is Harry Potter, by the way. Just I, I said that already. It's a collection of scenes where instead of just rushing off to do something, everybody stops, takes a breath, and thinks about the situation and then sees how they could either do it better or just like complains about how stupid the situation is or the characters are being. It's a little out of character for them because, you know, everybody uses supreme logic and calmness and rationale, and all the characters are teenagers, you know, that's not how teenagers work, but it does highlight just how stupid some of the actions that were taken in canon are, uh, granted, obviously, it's all with the benefit of hindsight, um, so I enjoy these kinds of stories where uh, wizard, with the wizarding logic and all that stuff gets taken down by like just pointing out how stupid it is. But I can also dislike how this story, people like these stories. Because in the end, this is very much an author just saying like, oh, this is all dumb, really stupid, and why are you so dumb? And putting those arguments into the mouth of whatever character they've chosen to be. The, their, basically, it's usually their favorite character. And what, but like whatever their character is, the paragon of righteousness and like intelligence and that. Here, it's basically always Hermione, Harry occasionally, though half the time he's part of the stupid crowd as well. Uh, I get it, you know, I still enjoy it because I like this, like I feel like some things were really stupid and calling them out just makes really fun scenes, like the very first chapter I believe is just like Harry like just saying like, yo you tormented Snape, almost killed him, that's, and then you kept tormenting him for no fucking reason, like that's not cool. Granted again, it's like 
what do they consider canon for these things? What or what? How much are they going? I, I don't know, but I do enjoy. I do enjoy stupid scenes being called out as stupid. It's a thing for me. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, you'll like this too. Stays on my list. And there we have it. Uh, brings up to the end of this video. So far, we've gone through 234 stories, with 131 staying on my list. So that's pretty good. Uh, and we're coming up on uh, the year anniversary of me starting this journey in like two weeks. So uh, I'll try, I'm gonna try and reach 250 by that point. So there we go. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, links to all the stories are in the description. If you want to keep up to date of when my, these videos come up, please subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.